Why does it always have to be humans with you? It's fine. No, okay, it doesn't have to be humans this time. All humor? No, it doesn't. You're human. I'll, I'll human you. I'll humor you. Humorn you. You got human. I'll you, I'll, <laughs> you'll be humorned. That's the one. <laughs> uh. Welcome back to Nature League. It's the fourth week of the month, and that means it is time for our segment called From A to B, where my friend Adrian Adams asks me, Britt Garner, a question about life on Earth or the natural world, and we always try to keep it themed. So this month on Nature League is all about rhythms. And so anything that kind of works in a cycle or repeats in certain intervals or has a rhythm, things like this. So my question is, is there really something about like a full moon that has an actual measurable effect on people and animals? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the full moon is like this romantic, ah, oh, ooh, the moon, wolves howl at it, the people are lunatics, because they, that's the thing. That doesn't seem like a real thing. It doesn't feel like it should be a real thing. What does a full moon give or change or do, at least on land? Uh, you can see better at night. So, I mean, don't you think that having extra light at night would affect species? The only difference that a full moon has on me is I, you know, when I take out the garbage at night, I'm like, oh, hey, I can see where I'm going. But when you take out that trash, you're not necessarily thinking about either like running from something or trying to catch something. So let's get into that perspective. Imagine that you are a predator. Yeah. And let's say that you are a predator that hunts at night. Okay. So what are some examples, like groups, groups of animals that do that? Owls. Mm hmm I was thinking more lions. They're, oh, really? Um, I thought that lions hunted in the day. So. They do, but I think that that's a, a skew in terms of uh, like nature documentaries. It's way easier for the film crew to catch those than having to do the night vision stuff. But if you actually look at patterns, you see a lot of nighttime hunting by African lions. So imagine that like your job uh, is to be stealthy in order to catch your next meal. Mm -hmm. If you, let's say instead of taking out the trash, uh, in the trash can was your next dinner, and uh, some other people wanted it too. If it was a full moon outside, uh. how successful would you be if you were trying to sneak up on something or gain something? Less? Well, yeah, it's absolutely going to affect it, especially if you're uh, if you rely on the cover of night. Mm. And so, one of the ways that the full moon and and lunar cycles affect life on Earth definitely has to do with predator and prey relationships and when the majority of predation happens. So there have been several studies that have shown that carnivores will actually decrease their hunting uh, frequencies during full moons. Mm. Again, because it's kind of like, oh, you left the light on, I'm not gonna be able to get anything, they can see me. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a study uh, a few years ago that looked at the incidence of lions hunting and killing humans in mm. Africa, mm -hmm. and they found that it happened the most uh, in the days right after the full moon. And that's really cool because what happens in the days after the full moon is that the period of darkness between mm -hmm. like sunset and moonrise is actually way darker yeah. than the other days mm -hmm. uh, of that of that um, you know lunar month. And so if it's much darker and you are a nighttime mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. predator and humans are then staying out later, human activity too, like when they're outside, mm -hmm. but it totally has like statistically significantly more attacks. Uh, by African lions on humans in those days right after. But that's one of those interesting things of like, lions are crazy after the full moon because they're crazy. Is that what people say? I think. Exactly how they <laughs> say it too. <laughs> so there's an actual reason though, like why attacks might go up. Okay, what about humans? Like what kind of effects would a full moon have on humans? Why does it always have to be humans with you? It's fine. No, okay, it doesn't have to be humans this time. It All human? No, it doesn't. You're human. All I'll human you. I'll humor you. Humorn you. You got human. I'll do you. I'll, you'll be humorned. <laughs> That's the one. Uh -huh. So it's really interesting, right? Moving inside over time has made it to where we are not exposed as often to something like the moon. If we sleep inside and curtains down, we don't have that visual cue as much as other species that don't live in like houses with with curtains and things. Do you think that maybe? Uh, early humans used full moons for extra hunting time. That's why people feel energized during a full moon. I think that's totally Is that a thing? fair. Is that a thing? I think that's fair. Because I, mean, I mean, we can't see in the dark very well. 
Right. And so if we, yeah, so humans straddle that line between like prey versus predator, especially, you know, thousands of years ago. And so in the predator version of that, probably. So for things on land, I'd say the, the amount of light is absolutely going to affect both predator and prey. But land is such a small part of the earth as a whole. 3%. <laughs> So with the land being 3% of the earth, my point is we should probably talk about the oceans. Yeah, fine. <laughs> the moon affects the tide. And so during a full moon, you have the highest tide available. So species use that differently as well. Yeah. So like for uh, laying eggs on the shore, some turtles will actually wait until the full moon when that tide is higher so that they can get further up or farther shore, up yeah. the shore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so like that's one way. But also if you are an organism that doesn't necessarily uh, like use a visual cue or use an auditory cue or mm -hmm. chemical cue, light can actually be a cue if you need to line something up if you totes. need to synchronize totes so that's why little baby turtles use the moon to navigate their way back to the sea yeah and that's why when there's cities on the edge of the oceans all the little baby turtles die turn off your lights people so here's here's the thing light pollution is such an issue because species rely on the the moon as a light source Moths. right I know, you and your mods. So light can be a, a communication device for synchronization. So when would maybe an organism need to synchronize some event? Mating. Exactly. So here's what's really cool. Corals and coral reef like off of Australia, they do it all, corals all around the world do it, but the, there's this amazing spectacle at the ones off of Australia. They, in December, um, at the full moon, they actually all release their gametes. So egg and sperm into the water at the exact same time. So if you synchronize and line it up, there's a higher probability of actually having reproductive, higher reproductive success. But if you're sitting there in your coral, you can't necessarily send a, a group text and be like, we're releasing gametes at 10. <laughs> I mean, you could, I'm not ruling it out. That's a kind of cool thing that the moon and moonlight can actually use as a communication device, specifically for like a synchronized Word. event, which is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Another thing with moonlight, did you know that it has UV rays? It basically almost acts like a black light on certain proteins. So there are actually these scorpions that glow in the moonlight. So during a full That's moon- That's pretty dope. So dope. So during the full moon, they'll actually be bright. It's like this neon blue. It's so cool. So those are just a few of examples of the effect that the moon can have either with light or with the way that it affects tides. And then a full moon has, it's almost like that effect, but ramped up. And so this idea of like lunacy and like crazy behavior at a full moon, there's something to be said for behaviors changing mm -hmm. for certain reasons. It's not like a crazed thing, but it has more to do with either like basically success either by getting prey or avoiding capture or communicating. So once again, it's almost like it's a piece of adaptation for life on Earth. The moon does stuff. The moon's crazy. That crazy moon. That's why it's lunatics. It's not that the people who are being affected by the moon are crazy. It's that the, the moon, moon is crazy. crazy. Thanks for joining us for this month's From A to B segment, where Adrian asked me a question about rhythm, specifically the moon. And I think we uh, went through some kind of cool things that the moon affects and also some reasons why we might have all these folk tales about crazy behaviors, right? Or odd things. Make sure to come back next week where we're actually going to be doing a special episode of the Nature Plus, where we're gonna explore nature in the context of a totally different discipline. And we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.